everyone, this is Shel C from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you an altered playing card um, with a gypsy on it. I'll explain a little bit more in a second, but what I wanted to show you is that these cards are plastic coated and I really needed to actually alter the card. I, I used a sanding block to sand off the plastic coating and most of the ink, and then I used heavy gesso, uh, for, that's a Prima product to put a couple coats of gesso on here to just even prepare the card for what I'm going to do which is going to be paint a portrait on it and um, so that's kind of what you need to do I found uh, this is only my second altered playing card but my other one I didn't really alter the actual card very much but when I tried to glue stuff on it yeah everything kept popping off so then I realized it says right on the box that it's plastic coated <laughs> how silly of me <laughs> anyway so I'm in this Facebook group called Altered Playing Cards, which is Ann Williamson's group. She has a Facebook channel called uh, Annalise Creates, Annalise Creations. And I, I'm over committed to everything. I'm in so many Facebook groups and there's so many great challenges and I want to do all this stuff. I can't do it all. So this is only my second Altered Playing Card that I'm doing, but I was very inspired this week by Ann's video where she said that the theme or prompt or whatever you want to call it is gypsy. Now I have this secret little uh, thing that I like to watch. It's called Ink Master. I actually watch any of the tattooing shows and I think that tattooing is an art and in fact it has several different types of forms that it can take and different people are good at different types of, of tattooing. Now, that being said, I only have one tattoo, and the reason for that is because in order to get a tattoo, you have to first decide exactly what you want, because that's going to be on your body for the rest of your life. I mean, it doesn't go away. It's not like you're going to wash it off. So you really got to make a decision that, it, that something is something you want for the rest of your life. The second thing is that you have to trust your artist, and I am such an untrusting person. I don't trust people, <laughs> and so... You know, I, I would have a hard time uh, letting someone tattoo me. So I have a dolphin on my ankle and I've probably had it for, I don't know, maybe 15 years because I really love dolphins and I think that a dolphin is my totem animal. So I was committed to getting that image, but I haven't ever gotten another one. But I'm certainly not opposed to tattoos. I think they're beautiful. I think that they are art. I think the people who do them in most cases are artists. I mean, some people are real hacks, but you know, you have to be able to draw, you have to be able to to know how to shade and how to color. So, that being said, <laughs> there is a type of tattooing, one of the categories or whatever you want to call it, that's called American Traditional. American Traditional is heavy black lines, heavy black shading, and a very limited color palette. And it's kind of what, like, it's kind of like the, what I would consider like the old style tattoos. I mean, there is something called new school, which is like this total crazy bright nonsense. But, um, I don't know. I think it's like something you would, I don't, it's traditional. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It's traditional. And they, one of the traditional images, um, you know, there's a lot of them, like a dagger with a skull or a rose or an eagle, things like that. But one of the traditional images is the gypsy. And I'm, I'm really not that into American traditional tattooing style, but I like the gypsy images that they do. And since the theme was gypsy and I like American traditional tattoo style gypsies, I decided to make my altar playing card. Was that a way too long of an explanation? <laughs> it really was. <laughs> I know. But that was my plan. So I wasn't sure if I could do it, but I I looked for some images on the internet and um, I noticed that a lot of the a lot of the images are in profile, which I don't usually draw girls in profile. I either do a three quarter or a, a full full face portrait. So I've never really done that much of the profile. So as a result, I think her chin's too big. But um, I noticed that the images are pretty much always wearing some sort of a headscarf. 
there's usually a rose involved or some other flower involved somewhere in there there's a lot of pearls um, big jewelry deeply colored makeup like um, either blue or dark eyeshadow and red red lips a lot of red around the cheek area that seems to go up into the eye and big black lashes things like that seem to be the most common things so those are things that I added to my image as I was drawing so I started out with a pencil drawing and then I inked it and that's what I was doing all this time while I was talking in case you guys were wondering <laughs> I know you're watching and listening to me and it's not really that coordinated but um, I used permanent ink which is my Faber-Castell artist pit pens to draw and I used a, I used the medium and the small to give a little bit of wane, weight line differential not a lot but a little bit I mean this is this is a very small little teeny tiny portrait because it's on a playing card which also is about the size of an artist trading card if you ever see people say ATCs that's a an artist trading card so this is about the same size as that then to pick my color palette like I said earlier it needs to be very limited so I picked uh, some acrylic dilutions paints in red blue and yellow which are the primary colors and then I added a green and then some black and some white and then I also decided to use portrait pink to do the skin I wanted her to be fairly pale um, I think that in a lot of a lot of the tattoos they just use the person's actual skin so but since I'm doing it, not doing a tattoo I needed skin color so I used portrait pink and then these are all just acrylic paints so all I'm doing is painting an acrylic portrait basically I'm using a very tiny brush because this is very very tiny and I'm mostly going to be paying attention to the shading because I think what makes the American traditional style what it is is because they really do bright bright white highlights and very very dark shades so I'm going to be adding a lot of black and then leaving some very very white areas and that was the part that I wasn't sure if I could do or not I wasn't sure exactly how to do it and most of this is going to happen in the hair the hair is old-fashioned looking to me like maybe it has some sausage curls <laughs> that's what my mom used to call them I don't know if that's really what it's called but you know those round round long curls that you would get if you didn't brush out a curl once you set it and then she also has this little bun on the top and a rose in her hair and a bandana on her head so she's definitely looking gypsy ish I think so what I'm doing to do the hair is to just to put a a black highlight a black <laughs> highlight <laughs> that makes no sense <laughs> a black shadow at the bottom of the hair strand and the top of the hair strand whatever it in wherever it ends or wherever it curls and then that creates the idea that it's rounded because the highlight is right in the middle and the the shadows are on the edges and there it's a, such a bright highlight and such a dark shadow that it really does give the look of curled shiny hair and it was so easy and I didn't even know that it was gonna be that easy I mean really all I'm doing is just putting black and leaving white but then I'm gonna go back in and add some white um, at the end just to like clean up some places where I where the brush was a little bit gloppy or whatever because my black acrylic these these are uh, just student grade paints and my black has gone bad it's um it's curdled it's yucky but I don't have money to go buy a new black right now so <laughs> I'm gonna live with it I'm just adding water to like try to smooth it out and just smooshing it around to try to smooth it out I'm also using a bit of gray um, in tattooing that would just be lighter dots like less dots in, a, in an area and then more dots in an area to make it a darker shadow I believe not a tattoo artist so I can't say that for 100% I'm not an expert in any of this so Oliver Peck if you're watching this video <laughs> like that would happen I don't need a critique 
I'm not a tattoo artist. I'm not a professional uh, person in American traditional tattoos. So don't critique me. If you have anything to say, Oliver Peck, just say something nice. If any of you have watched Ink Master, you know that they add a lot of stuff that's unnecessary, I, th I think. It's uh, to add drama. You know, the people are infighting and they're rude to each other and there's a lot of bleeped words. And they leave that stuff in to create a show. And what I'm interested in is watching the people tattoo and seeing the art. And uh, that's probably only about 50% of the show. So I will warn you if you decide to go watch it that it's, it's crass, it's rude, and some of you might be offended. So on the dress down here, um, I'm going to try something else. I'm adding shadows first. So I'm doing some gray. I mixed some gray with um, paint there. Adding that in. And then I'm going to do a really, really light, watery, watery acrylic wash over it for the blue. So that way it should show the shadows underneath. And then the blue on top just adds a little bit of extra color. Because I wanted to add another color in besides um, red <laughs> and green for the leaves. So... I also made her little pendant blue because I thought that would be a good place to put it. You know, you can't just put a color in one place. It just doesn't look right. You got to put it somewhere else in your composition to make it make more sense. And then of course I've just got the yellow which is to represent gold. There is no gold tattooing to my knowledge. So they use yellow and then they they shadow it in order to make it look more dimensional which I didn't do that much because it's such tiny tiny touches of yellow and that's my limited palette got my dark shadows and my bright highlights and I think I'm doing okay <laughs> right Oliver <laughs> if he actually watched this I'd probably just faint dead away I really would. He's not watching my YouTube channel. Okay, so now for the background, I got a little bit bigger brush and I mixed a watery mix of gray and I'm just putting that around the edges and then I'm going to blend it back out with water just to give a real light sh shading in background because it, it would look strange to just leave it all white. If you know what I mean, it would look strange. But that would, wouldn't be that surprising, considering that I'm a bit strange. And of course, the, uh, the heat tool portions I cut short. I don't want to have to, you to have to sit there and watch me dry paint. So after my portrait is complete, completely painted, then I'm going back in and re-inking the lines. So that's what the rest of this will be pretty much, I think, is uh, re-inking all the lines using the, I think I've got the medium pen because I want it to be fairly heavy. Because acrylic paint, although it's mostly translucent, does have some opacity to it and it messes up your pretty lines. If I'd used a watercolor, I wouldn't have to do this, but I used acrylic, so it's all good. I don't mind. So is there anything I wanted to say besides this? I don't know. The whole rest of this thing is mostly just inking. Hmm. I guess I can talk briefly about uh, what's coming up. There are some videos coming soon. There are more um, index card a day coming up, of course, because even if I do three each time, <laughs> <laughs> that's still 20 videos. <laughs> I really don't know if I'm committed to that. I really don't. But I will be making some more of those. Um, I am filming each little segment and then just deciding what to do with them later. Then also I have a collaboration coming up on Friday with um, Canvas Corp Brands. So you don't want to miss that. Um, 2,000 subscriber giveaway. Last time I looked I was only 10 away from 2,000. Can you believe that? That is so amazing. I thought when I started this channel that I would have my mom 
and maybe a few of my friends <laughs> subscribe. So 2,000 of you is like amazing, amazing. And I'm very, very grateful and thankful for that. So that uh, video will come up. Um, we'll be having questions again, five questions for you to answer. And then all the people who answer the questions in my comments will be entered. And then we'll have two drawings. And I'll make two pieces of art for two people. So I wish you luck. <laughs> I hope that you uh, watch for that video and that you go ahead and uh, leave comments and answer my questions. And of course you have to be subscribed because that's just, yeah, duh, you have to be subscribed. Um, also, for this video, if you wanted to join in on this fun little thing with the altered playing cards, I'll leave a link below to Anne's Facebook group. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe, comment, and share. And uh, you just saw me doing highlights there at the end with my white Posca pen, just to add a few bright pops of white. And then I'm going to ink the edges with watering can colored archival ink. And then I am done with my project. I hope you enjoyed this. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.